Everybody, it's Brady here from uh, BGWX and um, be doing a little update on our Hurricane Helene. Um, first, you can all see Isaac formed um, from Note 50 mile per hour tropical storm out in the North Atlantic, so not a concern. But just uh, for, for, for those that are wondering, um, believe the night, uh, I forget what name storm, but regardless, focus on Helene. Currently, um, a 972 millibar, 85 mile per hour hurricane. Um, I, there's some discourse on the mile per hour currently right now honestly i think um that's an, I, it is relevant but it's not too relevant um because it's about what's going to be happening at landfall um so that we c you can maybe uh, have some more discourse over um but it's regardless hurricane helene just passed through the yucatan earlier today um and it's going to be moving towards the big bend of florida and that's the main that's the main concern um currently um, so if we take a look here at satellite, um, notice currently at the moment today, it's kind of been battling a little bit of this concentric um, eye wall structure a little bit. So um, it's been making it, the pressure we're still seeing, you know, drop, you know, not too far off from expected, but um, you know, it's, it hasn't been quite, the winds haven't uh, been able to catch up as much. Um, and I think that in part of that is because when you have that, if we go to recon here we have that double um wind maximum you can kind of see on some of these you know if we look especially you can see in the northeast eye wall here where you can see um maybe you can let's see if this works and try it yes it does uh so take here we have this double wind maximum here so what this does is you know it focuses the energy to two different areas um versus one area of the eye wall um so uh, preventing you know stronger you know wind readings from being um uh, from being present and you know we'll have to see you know on um you know on on satellite if you know over overnight tonight you know if we see that uh, a little bit of a merger form that's kind of what i'm suspecting you know is, is possible here um it's not, you know, because we're not so developed. You don't have a big, you know, Cat 3, Cat 4 hurricane currently. Um, but what we do have is we take a screenshot here. Is we have that inner core uh, present here. Maybe black would be the best color to use. So we'll try blue. Yep, we'll, blue will work. Um, so we have right, here's our here's our eye right, right around in here. And then we have that main ring of convection firing around the inner core here but you also notice this outer band here firing as well and i think we'll look for this convection to possibly to allow um to pull in this outer band here and we'll see a merger of some sorts so that we consolidate that outer we consolidate this outer eye wall here um and this inner inner core uh kind of merges with that outer eye wall um, and we get a little bit of an in-between from there. Um, so it'll be a rather large eye, but not um, not as small as the inner core um, you may see on some of the um, mi microwave imagery uh, uh, currently. But, you know, this is this is a large system, very large system. If, you know, if I, you know, take another screenshot so I can so I can draw on this again, um, you know, you, you will notice we have all this out here, right? out ahead of this system and this is all precursor rainfall um you know for what for what's going to be you know it's a precursor for what's going to be happening just a little bit um uh, so there's you know heavy rain out in front strong gusty winds but the main show is still yet to get going um but will be coming um soon and not just on the coast it will also be moving inland as well um and if i take a look at the models to show kind of what i've been talking about in terms of you know this it, 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 you know environment that's very favorable i'm still a little bit too strong here on the or maybe not too far off about close. okay not too bad about two millibars off here on the on the half say so um regardless i want to actually want to get the parent so we can get the bigger picture um and take a look at the upper level environment the one of the reasons i'm so very you know kind of concerned is you know um uh, we'll take a screenshot here and then i'll do, do another one after um so we have this environment um that's really 
really gonna allow this uh, to take off um, you know we have our upper level anticyclone here um, which is you know weak weaker upper level winds in that place but notice right hurricanes they spin like this right and so notice the upper level outflow here right and we notice these strong winds out ahead and it helps spin our storm faster and then combine that with the position of our um, ULAC let's call it to so I don't have to say that every time it's allowing the spin of this system to be in a favorable position for out outflow to get enhanced so really all of this wind shear out here is really just helping to spin the storm faster um, and when you look at a hurricane from a vertical perspective um, you know the faster you get this that was not as straight as I wanted that the faster um, and the, the more you allow it to breathe up here the faster you can allow it to get air out of this out of the system um, right because it starts at the surface the faster you can get it to get out um, you know the faster you get it to spin at the bottom where the surface is um, that's I'm not a uh, official uh, scient scientist here so I can't uh, pr provide you with with a perfect explanation but um, that that's kind of the gist of it where of where like the, the this upper level uh, you know wind shear is actually working to enhance it and the position of our ULAC is actually allowing this to take off so if we take another look again we advance it you know into uh, a little bit further here um, notice don't worry about you know the the exact for, forecast and intensity of this specific model uh, but if we if we view this here notice now this position right before landfall still rather favorable where a uh, little bit of wind shear pressing here but not against the inner core um, so we can event this system and allow it to breathe and that's why there's a real concern for how strong this is going to get um, um, tomorrow and the rate of intensification is just going to be is going to be very significant that's the real concern and that's also going to move over 30 you know degrees celsius waters um, 30 31 degrees celsius and that's and that's a that's a major you know major concern um, with that as well did i delete the deep ocean heat content i thought i still had it ah it's all right um, and it's also moving pretty close to a warm eddy of deep ocean heat content, meaning heat below um, warmth, you know, the depth of how warm the, the sea surface temperatures are below the surface, um, if that makes sense. So, right, imagine, you know, the ocean as a vertical, um, you know, right, this is the ocean here. If you can go back to black, Amy Winehouse, if you get that reference. Um, and right how warm it goes below the ocean the isotherm um, so that's kind of a view of deep ocean heat content um, if you imagine this is the ocean here right 30 31 here and then how deep you know does that you know 26 degree you know isotherm uh, go below the surface you know it's kind of a, a, a visual of that um, so there's a very you know significant um, very significant hurricane here you know at, at, at threat here um, you know, if I had to put a number to it, uh, I'd say I'd somewhere somewhere in that four range. I think is a good bet. Um, I, I was leaning, you know, earlier today, mid to high end four. You know, kind of as as an estimate, just given how strong this environment is. And I, you know, I've seen these play out before. Um, in many 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 times, do they come through in terms of helping that? You know, look at Zeta as an example back in twenty twenty one. Um, we, we, where we had to use the Greek alphabet, um, you know, marginal warmth in the ocean, um, you know, 26 to 28 degrees Celsius, maybe, if I remember correctly, um, but very good upper level enhancement there. And we saw it strengthen, uh, I believe, into a major hurricane, 115 miles per hour, and, and um, had a big impact on southeast, um, on southern Louisiana. And then, you know, you look at another, and actually that moved into Georgia area as well which I'm concerned about uh, for this one as well. And then we talk about um, Ian, for example. We talk about Hurricane Michael. Those are other events, too, where we and those are bigger events where we saw, you know, favorable upper-level pattern help um, the rate of intensification out. Um, 
and you know not help the residents out of those areas sadly but you know this is that this is why uh, you know i've been paying so much attention to this um this is i feel like it's a it's a can't miss environment for in terms of rapid intensification um, um tomorrow so i'm very you know, it's I'm wondering what the limit is and, you know, what happens tonight can kind of lead to if we're going to be looking at a category three, category four, or are we going to be looking at, you know, or is, you know, I, I guess a five is possible. Um, you know, I, I really just don't want to rule it out given the, given, given, given the environment we're dealing with here. Um, you know, luckily the structure has kind of slowed, slow things down today a little, just a little bit, um, in terms of that possibility, but, um, definitely there's that definitely still possible um, and you know National Hurricane Center explicitly you know forecasting I think I messed it up I was supposed to, should have put 45 miles per hour on that earlier but it's a strong it's a lot strong rate of intensification be forecasting in a short amount of time so that's that's a real real concern there and then the storm surge I have to mention 15 to 20 feet max maximum there um, it, it I mean that that's just a very very huge concern, you know e, you know east of uh, east of Tallahassee there in the Apalachicola Bay. I mean just a very very large concern about the storm surge there, um, and that's a large area where up where twelve plus uh, feet of storm surge is possible as well. Six feet is considered life threatening, so when we look at that, that's that's a major problem where now we're looking at you know, from Tampa all the way to Apalachicola almost, we're looking at, uh, uh, you know, six plus feet of life-threatening storm surge possible. And these numbers could be a little bit higher too if the forecast exceeds it. And then we look at rainfall inland too, very, very large concern where, I mean, look at that large area inland of four to six plus inches of rainfall. And then some of those mountain areas across um, you know, Georgia, South Carolina, um, North Carolina, into you know, southeastern Tennessee, even where we could be looking at, you know, you know, eight to 15 plus inches of rainfall for a large, for a large region. So that's, that's very concerning. And the concern for down trees for 60, 70, 80 plus mile per hour wind gusts far inland. Remember, the stronger the storm is, um, the, the stronger those wind gusts will be inland. It will be moving fairly, fairly quick pace too. Um, after once it makes landfall and so it's that's good news for the places at the coast but it's bad news for the places inland because that means now it's going to move forward accelerate stronger wind gusts when you have a faster moving storm as well it should be noted and then we also that means those stronger strong winds um, therefore make it farther inland so there's a very um, there's a very large concern for for that when uh, you know for down trees being without power for days um, remember, you have to remove those trees in order to, to, to restore power. So a lot, you, a lot of people should be preparing to be in the dark and away from windows, um, you know, d during these events um, for, for further inland. Um, you know, Atlanta, Atlanta Metro is definitely concerned with this uh, with the storm as well. And then really those North Georgia mountains where there's going to be a lot of rainfall and there's also going to be um, a, a, a sh some strong wind gusts, you know, 50, 60, 70, maybe even 80 plus miles an hour, depending on um, how, how strong um, Helene gets. So again, I can't stress enough. This is a very, this is, you know, it has to be one, it's one of those events, you know, that will be remembered for sure. Probably a storm that gets retired, um, bear, bearing anything crazy, but this is going to be a, you know, a very tough time um, you know, for people. So I, I really recommend, you know, if you have family there, you have friends there that are in the path of the, of this system, you know, I really recommend that you're able, you're able to get the word out, um, and be, if, you know, someone's trying to stay in a storm surge zone, um, and you, and you're aware or a friend of a friend, you know, like do everything you can, um, to get them to get out at the end of the day, it's their lives. It's, um, you can't control them, but you know, we, you know, first responders aren't able to help those people. Um, you know, if they stay. So that's, that's a major concern, uh, uh, for, for those two, you don't want to put first responders at risk, um, uh, because you made the decision to stay. Um, it's going to be very, very, very dangerous. So I really hope people, you know, uh, heed to the warnings. I'll be tracking this, um, pretty, pretty thoroughly in depth, 
um, until landfall, uh, um, you know, you know, Friday and maybe a little bit busy around the time of landfall, um, Friday PM. So hopefully, uh, um, ho- ho- you know, hopefully everything, you know, I'm, I'm doing it, uh, prior can, uh, you know, make up for that, but, you know, I do have my own life to live as well. So, um, can't stop, can't stop that unless the, the hurricane's hitting me myself. So, um, I'll keep tracking, uh, this, it will be plenty of Twitter updates and, um, Uh, I'll see you all later. Peace.